All right, so on garden education today, we're gonna to talk a little bit about this white birch. <clears throat> a lot of the birches in the urban and suburban environment are in decline in Southern Ontario for a couple of different reasons, just a couple of factors that add to this decline. One is that the roots of the tree really like, like uh, cooler conditions. They don't like to be too warm. And a lot in the urban and suburban environment, they don't get that. Uh, also, there's a lot more air pollution to contend with and various other features that the tree doesn't necessarily enjoy. So add that all together and the tree gets stressed. And you can see with this tree, there's various bits of decline. You can see, well, it's, it's hard to see. I can see as an arborist that there are, there's dieback throughout the canopy. So pieces of the canopy are, are dying throughout and this is because of the bronze birch borer, which is an insect which takes hold in these stressed trees. And it starts to take out branches throughout the canopy as it bores through the wood and, uh, and really inhibits a lot of the, the flow of, of nutrients through the trunk and the branches. So what I'm going to do today, since it's winter and the bug's not out, I'm going to make some cuts on this tree. If I were to make the same cuts in the summertime when the the bronze birch borer, this bug is out and about, it will actually smell the pheromones released from the cut wood and will be attracted to the tree. So we'd like to take care of this in the winter time. All right, people. Um, <laughs> you're on recording, I just turned it on. <laughs> All right, uh, while Colin climbs a tree, I would like to point something out regarding tree work. Um, we recommend highly that you consult a professional arborist for any of your tree, tree care needs. Uh, and please do not attempt this at home. Um, we'll watch Colin climb here. It is important too to say that at all times uh, when I'm on the ground here, I am keeping uh, continual eye contact to Colin in the tree uh, in case anything falls out as there could be some branches or debris that come down. I'm also gonna note uh, Colin's personal protective equipment or we call it PPE. He is wearing a helmet. He is wearing steel toe boots. He is wearing gloves. And he is also wearing safety glasses. Smile, Colin. The branch is now on the ground and everybody is safe. So we're just gonna take this branch away, clean up, and you can see Colin come out of the tree and the white birch has been pruned. So now that I'm out of the tree, I want to talk a little bit about our philosophy, preserve, create, evolve. So with this tree, if we want to preserve it and give it the longest life that it can possibly have, we need to do a few things. As an ISA certified arborist, I recommend mostly to people a, f a few very easy to do things. One is mulch. So if it's in a lawn environment, you want to add a ring of mulch all the way out to the drip line of the tree. So giving it a nice wide swath where the roots can thrive. If it's in the garden here, obviously adding mulch to the garden, roughly three to four inches of partially composted mulch, and that gives a, an opportunity for those nutrients from, from the bark mulch to go into the soil and feed the tree. Also, the bark mulch is going to help keep the, the moisture content around the tree more constant. It's also going to help buffer temperature changes. So in the, the heat of the summer, it's going to keep things a little bit cooler, which, of course, this tree likes. If we want to look at create, well, we don't necessarily need to keep planting white birch. This is Betula papyrifera. We can start planting Betula nigra, which is a river birch. It's slightly different. It has a lot of the same features as, as the white birch here. The main difference is that the color of the tree is not white, it's more of a salmon-y pink color. Uh, very, very beautiful. If you get a chance to Google that, check it out. And the last thing we want to talk about is evolve. So how are we evolving with this tree? Well, a lot in the past what has happened is we've used chemicals to stave off the insect, but this is just a band-aid fix. It doesn't get to the root of the problem, which are all the cultural things that are happening. If the tree doesn't like it here, it's not going to thrive. So right from the beginning, it's going to be a problem. 
Why do we have to use chemicals? Well, we don't have to use chemicals. What we need to do is put more time and effort into putting the right plant in the right location. And to do this, I highly recommend that you talk to an ISA, International Society of Arboriculture, certified arborist. Can you ring the, the wind chime? It's really nice. Ha, ha, ha.